Go ho ho and a bottle of rum drinking buddies. We are here to talk all about rum. I can smell the tropical cola and banana notes fly floating up to my nose right now. Um, let's dive right in. I'm your drinking buddy. I think that we should just dive right in. Um, a couple reasons why I haven't dived into to rum that much. Well, uh, as you can see, I got a lot of bourbon and I got a lot of whiskey and it's just one of those situations where it's hard for me to get into a new category when I, there's already so many bourbons that I want to buy that I can't buy. So getting into a new category is kind of difficult for me. Um, another thing too is I find it, you know, with bourbon, if it says bourbon on the label, I know there's no additives, I know there's no colors, I know that it's, you know, if, if it's not, if it doesn't have an age statement on it, it's at least four years old, you know, these are all things that rum kind of gets a little murky on. I've heard that they can add colors and flavors and sugars. The aging can be kind of murky as well. They can put an age statement of say 10 years and that just means that the oldest rum in the in the bottle is 10 years old. Um, I don't know what the percentages have to be, but you know, I, that, that that's where I get into a territory where I'm confused. So these ones were recommended because they have pretty good transparency on their barrels. They, you know, advertise themselves as not being, you know, additive, you know, they, they don't add things to them. Uh, I'm rambling at this point. First up, we have uh, Diplomatico. This is going to be a Venezuelan rum. It's going to be 86 proof. And it's very light on the nose. Very, but reminding me of buttercream frosting. But molasses as well. And something a little spicy, like, like cloves. Hmm. Pleasant mouthfeel on that. It's a little thin at first, but then it, it opens up. It opens up really wide. It's really nice and spicy. A lot of clove, a lot of cinnamon on here. Um, yeah, that's... Uh, Hmm, that's pretty good. Yeah, kind of spicy, kind of funky. Um, yeah, I could see myself really enjoying that pour. Uh, next up, we have a four square. Now, this is going to be the Indelible. Um, it is X bourbon and X um, Zinfandel cask aged. Um, it is 11 years old, cask strength, 96 proof. Um, it is both pot and column still, and it's from Barbados. Very different nose. This one's got actually kind of got like a... This one doesn't have a great nose. I would, I would say that there's like a chemical note on here that I don't love. But there's also like a... Like a graham cracker thing. Brown sugar graham cracker. Mm. Now, I like the palate a lot more than I like the nose. That is really tasty. That is cola and banana. It's like tropical, spicy. Again, clove, um, brown sugar. Not brown sugar, more molassesy. And then like a, like a little burning sensation on the tip of my tongue that is a little bit chemically. I don't love that, but I, I, that is a good pour. Like, I could see myself really enjoying this guy. A little bit of an off-putting flavor in there, but not dramatic. This one's 119 proof. This is going to be a 15-year, also from Barbados. This is Holmes K. This is a single cask, 15-year-old rum. Um, it's going to be no additives, and uh, ex, ex, it's ex-bourbon barrels on here. 59.5 proof. I guess I should give you some nosy nose. Notes. You know what? This one's got that chemical-y thing on the nose, too. But there's also on this one more, like, tobacco. Like, I'm, I'm, this one's giving me cigar box vibes. But also tropical. Like, it's just, I mean, to me, like, smelling rum really reminds me of those tiki drinks, because they're often made with rum, so... I smell this and it just takes me to like something that, you know, that I'm drinking out of a coconut with a bunch of straws and an umbrella sticking out of it. That's, that's where my brain goes when I smell something like this. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, I guess I should say these first two samples came from Marco and Javier at Nana's Kitchen. So thank you very much for sending me these or for letting me use these. Um, uh, if you're in Tucson, definitely check out Nana's Kitchen. Great people over there. Great food. Um, the best Mexican food I think I've, I've ever had. Um, these two came from a great subscriber named Robert. So thank you for Robert for these. This one on the palette is giving me... <sighs> that one's a that one's a little more funky than the last one. That one's like I like it. Uh, that it's man that like the dankness that I get on some bourbons on the nose. It's almost it tastes like that. It's got like it's got like that wet basement vibe, like like wet tree stump things. Like also banana and also like gingerbread on this guy. Really good. I could see myself drinking that as well. Last up, we have here, this one's artisanal rum. This is OFTD, so that's Old Fashioned TD. Um, I don't remember what TD stands for, so I'll put it right here. <laughs> um, this is Plantation um, Overproof Rum, 69% alcohol, and it is Jamaican rum. So. We're probably talking pot still here. We're probably talking funky. Oh, and it's got a funky nose. That um, that chemically smell that I got off two and three is also here. I'm trying to give it, put it in words, but it's almost like a, um, and this is like, this is gonna sound terrible. It's not that bad, but it's giving me vibes of uh, acetone. Um, I'm not saying that this is bad. I'm not saying that any of these are bad, but I'm saying that that is there on the nose a little bit. But yeah, this guy is also like figgy. Figs and raisins, like dried fruit. Little pineapple in here, maybe? Like, like funky pineapple that's like been sitting out for a couple days. It's like uh, fermenting in the corner. You, you forgot about some pineapple and now it's turning into booze. Oh, that is funky. That is raisins. That like, raisins and figs come through like in droves on that. That's got the clove that the first one had. I think these are both dark rums. I think. Um, you know, to be perfectly honest, I don't know the difference between a dark rum and a gold rum, because uh, generally, the grocery store rums or the gas station rums you would see the gold is just food coloring, and I believe the dark rum is just food coloring too. To be honest. Yeah, she's a proofy girl. That you can taste the heat on that. But considering that's 188, 138 proof, so that is almost that is almost hazmat territory. But it doesn't drink that hot. Yeah, a lot of clove flavor on here. Um, those uh, those Dijarm cigarettes, the the clove cigarettes. That's a, that's a funky one. That's a funky one. Well, to my palate, which as you guys know, is more of a whiskey palate. Um, I'm going to say that I like these two the most, the low proof guy and the high proof guy. I think this, um, could cater to people who like lower proof bourbons, lower proof scotches, lower proof rice. And I think this could cater to some of those proof founds out there. These two are really good. Like I really like both of them, but I feel like, um, they're, uh, they're just not as interesting as what's going on in these two glasses. So, um, I believe these are the two old guys too. This is, this is 11 and this is 15. Neither one of these guys I could find an age statement on. So maybe I like young rum. I like young rye. Let me know if you have dove into rum. Let me know if there's another rum that I need to try out there that, um, uh, you know, you think is excellent. Um, let me know if there's. You know, another uh, spirit category that I need to dive into. Are you into Armagnacs and you'd like to see me review one or two of those? Um, you know, I'm always willing to do that, especially if you guys are willing to send me samples. I'll try anything. Preferably not poison. Please don't poison me. But now that I think about it, 
You guys are from the internet and I make reviews and sometimes I might piss off a brand. Please don't poison me. <laughs> While drinking buddies, I really appreciate all of you. I hope you liked this little rum thing here. I hope you learned something maybe. Uh, I did, I certainly did. I, I, but this, I'm new to this, so we'd be learning together. Um, like the video if you've stayed this long. I believe there's something in your YouTube contract that says you have to like a video if you've watched it till the end. Um, and uh, yeah, subscribe if you're not a subscriber. And then if you're a super fan, I have a link in the description to become a channel member. A couple bucks a month will get you chances to get into a lot more giveaways. Um, and uh, we'll eventually get us into barrel picks. Cheers.